Man, it's cold. Hey, fellas. Konnichiwa. This is Spies in Disguise. Whoa, okay, okay. A movie that features Will Smith playing the role of Lance Sterling. Ugh. The world's most awesome spy. And this is Walter Beckett, played by Tom Holland, who is described as a socially inept scientific genius. So in the movie, one of these characters turn into an animal. If I were to show you these four images, assuming that you know nothing about these movies, which one of these seem like the more believable change? Well, to me, these characters look similar enough that I'd be more inclined to believe that this change happens in the movie, but it doesn't. <laughs> Even though these two characters are voiced by the exact same actor, they are in different movies. The latter being from Onward, a Pixar movie scheduled for release in 2020. There seems to be a bubbling criticism that there's a certain character type that is plaguing the industry, making this character design trend to have a poor reputation. So what is this infamous character design? And how come it isn't a big issue? Well, it stems from a couple of viral tweets revolving around the dialogue of a certain trend in the head and face shapes used in 3D character design. Having Johnny from Hotel Transylvania, Walter from Spies in Disguise, Arthur from Arthur Christmas, Alfredo from Ratatouille, Ian from Onward, and... And from this, you can see that there seems to be a common trend within these six characters. It seems to be a shy, nerdy, and or wacky Caucasian young adult male with a rounded head shape, big nose, circular eyes, wide mouth, and or weak chin. Some have coined the term to describe this, the Pixar head. It reminded me of a tweet I saw a while back about Pixar moms, and I feel like the argument there suffers from the same issues as the argument here. This is simply too small of a pool to declare it to be a widespread issue. I decided to look back at a ton of movies that have come out within the last 20 years, and decided to take my criteria and filter it against the characters that are in them. The first filter is that it has to be a male character in a 3D medium, or look like it comes from a 3D medium. The next definition being that they must have that rounded head shape. The the next definition is that they must appear to look somewhere within their teens or young adulthood and look like a human. Then from there, if you have the circular eyes, big nose, and or weak chin, then you'll meet the requirements for a Pixar head. So everyone from Ralph from Wreck-It Ralph, Louis from Ugly Dolls, Woody from Toy Story 3, or Alex, yes as a human character in the Emoji Movie, all can fit some criteria Sugar here. So while all of that data is being processed, let's take a minute to talk about another character design criticism. The criticism that something has a Cal art style. It's centered around a small selection of shows that look similar and display traits that would appear that there's only one way to draw certain characters. What is the Cal art style? If you've been on the internet the last few weeks, especially around the announcement of Thundercats Roar, you may have seen a spike in criticism towards modern day animation art styles, including this gif of a simple bean shaped head and ovalish shaped smile altering ever so slightly, each time morphing to a different cartoon character, essentially illustrating the point that all of these cartoons look the same. This criticism was very popular back in 2018, where shows like CV Universe, Star vs. the Forces of Evil, and The Amazing World of Gumball were very popular shows. The issue with this criticism is that in addition to the GIF being inaccurate in how the characters look for the time, it served to close the door on any meaningful conversation. If there was a CalArt style, hypothetically, then what did that mean? Does this style imply a narrow thinking mindset towards modern animation? Was this style to be seen as a repulsive and changing factor towards future viewing and purchasing decisions? Or was it a sign of a lazy attempt to create a character that looks easy on the eyes? The problem with this label was that there was no common consensus with the people who use this as their criticism. Even if it was accurate towards its name, it has no correlation with any defined negative attributes. Shows that were considered to be in the CalArt style are not all positively received shows or negatively received shows. There are successful shows and unsuccessful shows. They aren't even indicative of the creator, as some creators are viewed highly and some have a lower reputation. If you were to say that a show is mean or gross, this word means something, and someone can take that definition and see if they agree or disagree. 
Oh, looks like that data has been processed. So let's take a look. So it took different characters from different years, animation studios, genres, ages, and roles within their respective media, and put them through the four-step filter to see if we can find a trend. I was surprised to figure out that there are some truths to this. I expanded the initial six and added about 40 to 50 more characters. More than half of them are eliminated once you add the round head shape filter. Then seven more are eliminated once you look for a character that appears to look like a human, but also a young man. Then when you add the other features, a weak chin, big nose, circular eyes, and or a wide mouth, I was left with 14 main characters, an additional eight from the original six that we had. Jin from Abominable, Ted from The Boss Baby, Wilbur from Meet the Robinsons, Hero from Big Hero 6, Percy from Smallfoot, Alex from The Emoji Movie, Hiccup from How to Train Your Dragon, and Sherwin from In a Heartbeat. These 14 characters have a lot of appearance traits that make them look very similar. So this means for sure there is a Pixar head epidemic, right? No. Well, even though about 30% of the characters here look very similar, and if you extend that to those who maybe aren't in the right age or are a male with a round head, that's an additional 12 being over half of the 46 characters analyzed here, we actually hit the same mark we did with the CalArts argument. What does this argument exactly mean? An identical design doesn't indicate a bad character. There are characters such as Flint Lockwood, who I'd consider to be an enjoyable character from both the movie and the series. His wacky attitude and never give up attitude was pleasant to watch. Sherwin was also a great character. His incredible shyness and fear of rejection made him a relatable character, especially to those who may go through these same situations. However, Alex was almost a non-character in the Emoji movie and did not bring anything new or engaging to the table. However, you have characters such as Ralph who don't fit the mold, and his character sort of embodies not fitting the mold. With good intentions, a goofy personality, and admiration for his friend Vanellope, and on top of that, most importantly, his character design. Charlie Brown is a fantastic character, and while he is leaning in the direction of the design trend, I doubt any of why people enjoy him has to do with that. Milo from Mars Needs Moms isn't a good character, as his one-track mind made for a frustrating experience. So whether it's Woody or Emmett or Dash, there isn't a strong correlation between identical design and identical perception of a character. So then this must mean that a samey design must indicate a bad movie? <laughs> Meet the Robinsons is a heavily praised movie that has a ton of great characters. The Boss Baby is received very poorly, noting its lack of an engaging main character, an uncomfortable viewing experience, and lacking character design. You can see where I'm going here, there's no correlation. So surely this must mean that a samey design must indicate a stagnant industry? <laughs> Well, it is a certainty that there's always going to be movies around that capitalize on trends or try to emulate heavily on what movies worked before, there are a lot of stylized movies out there that set the tone for something new and drive the medium forward with fresh, innovative, and most importantly, engaging and entertaining media. There is a reason why no one knows about this infamous character design, and that's because no one should care. These arguments demonize the notions of wanting more movies and media in a certain way because you resonated with it. The idea that if something is the same in a small number of aspects must mean that it's bad is limiting and counterproductive to the idea of creativity and uniqueness. This label is completely irrelevant to how these characters are and what they mean to us. I'd love to see more movies try what Into the Spider-Verse did. Inversely, I think with Smallfoot, Abominable, and Nur the North 2 and all the other Arctic movies. I think I had my fair share of movies that involved these characters. Imagine this mindset with the notion of 2D versus 3D or digital animation versus traditional animation. All it does is stop the conversation on arbitrary traits that don't indicate how people consume media. These arguments close the door on any meaningful interaction because you just slap a label on it and now you're arguing about the label rather than what the label means. The fact that someone has a bean-shaped head or thin outlines as opposed to thick outlines are just tiny puzzle pieces to the grander media that should be focused on in context to 
its intent and execution. It's unfortunate that some people are so focused on the similarity between two movies that they turn their back on a decade of variety and choice. So what do you choose? Thank you so much for watching. Special thanks to the supporters of January. And until next time, take care. Alpha out.